Hey everyone, welcome to what might be, you might be watching the very first episode of The Secrets of Stylish Women, which is my podcast. Um, I'm recording this first episode just to get the flow and see, I don't know if I want to keep this episode as the first one. Um, but I think going forward at some point, I'm going to have live streaming episodes in real time. So um, stay tuned for that. Let's see. Um, let me introduce myself. My name is Lauren Simmons. I am a personal stylist, style strategist, lover of fashion, and I help women women over 40 reclaim the portion of their identity that is related to personal style. So we all have to get dressed, um, but not everyone does so with intention. And I focus on women, middle-aged women, because I'm a middle-aged woman. woman. <laughs> I'm only one. <laughs> and, um, you know, I know that there's a need for this type of hands-on approach and information related to personal style. So I'm going to get to that in a minute. But the name of this podcast is called The Secrets of Stylish Women. So I'm going to start off by giving you one of my style secrets. And this can be interpreted, you know, a style secret can be interpreted in many types of ways. So this style secret is something that may not come top of mind, but I don't put, I don't allow myself to feel pressured to look put together every time I leave the house. And what I mean by that is sometimes I just put on a regular outfit and go to the store and I don't wear makeup all the time and I don't feel uncomfortable about it or bad about it. Now, when I'm in a professional setting, that's different. Um, you know, when I go into the office, I usually have my, you know, office look, <laughs> which includes wearing makeup, but I don't wear makeup on the weekends if I'm not, you know, going out. But sometimes I do. I mean, it's really a, a matter of how I'm feeling and, and what what I am looking to um, convey through how I'm showing up. So I don't put pressure on myself to look good all the time. In fact, um, so I, I try not to look like I'm just rolled out of bed, you know, like I just didn't put any thought into my outfit, but sometimes I'll just put on a regular outfit, nothing spectacular, just looking to blend into the background. And I encourage you, if you are the type of woman who likes to, you know, always portray a consistent image. Um, consistency comes from the things that you do regularly over time. It doesn't mean, you know, every single time. So if you put pressure on yourself to wear makeup all the time and have perfect hair or perfect hair all the time or something like that, it's okay. It's okay. Just ease up a little. It's, it, it's all good. You don't have to be that perfect and pristine. Okay. So that's my style secret. Um, Allow yourself some room to not be perfect because uh, guess what? Even if you were trying to achieve that, you're not going to. Okay. So allow yourself some latitude to just, you know, be human. Okay. So that's my style secret for the day. Now, let me get into an introduction. So my name is Lauren Simmons, and I am the founder of The Fearless Fashionista, which is a personal styling agency for women over 40. I did mention that earlier. And um, the goal is, again, to help women feel good about themselves through the lens of personal style. Um, and the way I view what I do is it goes way beyond the clothing. It's obvious to think that clothing is a part of the personal styling experience, and it is. But before you can even get to the clothing, there's so much more that is involved and related to and influences how we show up. Everything that we put on, there's a reason. Um, whether it's a an intentional fashion choice or that's the closest or the cleanest thing around, there are reasons why we wear the things we wear. There are reasons why we pull um, or we select things to be in our closets. There's a reason why we shop and buy certain things, certain brands, certain price points, colors, shapes, styles, all of that stuff. There are reasons. And I help women explore the reasons why they dress the way they dress. Help them identify some style goals. Help them work through maybe some of those limitations that will help, excuse me, preventing them from dressing the way they want to dress. You know, there's a lot of power in clothing. 
There's a lot of power in style. And I look at style as a tool, <laughs> a tactic. It's also a form of creative expression. So I'm a creative and I am totally, you know, bought into all of the magic that's associated with clothes and the, the creative nature and the creative thought processes behind, you know, design and development and all that stuff. I understand that that's an art. But I also look at style and the, the ability to pull together, you know, an outfit or a wardrobe, a look that conveys something that is it's powerful. So that's a tool. It's a strategy. Why wouldn't you use that strategy to help you move forward in life? I say this all the time, but there are studies that show that style, how you dress impacts um the way you think, if you dress in a more polished and professional way, it can help you embody characteristics of a leader. There are studies that show, you know, if you put something on, it can impact how you carry yourself, how you perform. So in this day and age where competition is steep, like people out there, people are hungry. Um, and what I mean by that is for those who are in the position to, or have the drive to the opportunity to, um, you know, run a, you know, build a business, be, become an entrepreneur, build something, create something, even within the, within the context of other organizations, like the tools are out there. So opportunity is out there. So the competition is fierce and the people who are going to be successful are the ones who find a way to differentiate themselves through, uh, you know, physical branding, through knowledge, through expertise, through the willingness to keep going over time. So it's a combination of things. I'm not saying that style is going to cure, you know, all the problems of the world, but if you had an opportunity to have a leg up on the competition or a way to stand out, why wouldn't you use that? And the thing is, style is something that every woman can use. Like, it's not something for some, it's for all of us, like all of us, you know? And style means different things to different people. It also means different things in different contexts. So, you know, the choice is yours, but it's an easy enough thing to improve. And guess what? It's one of the few things that you can invest in that can start giving you almost immediate results. So you can go, I mean, you can buy some clothes and you can look better, but the process um, of, you know, working through your thoughts and ideas about style, that's where I come in. I help you get to the stage where you can be like, oh, okay, I can buy this and this is gonna look good on me. Or these are the stores that I can shop at. These are the silhouettes that I should try. I can actually mix and match these colors or these patterns. So I give women the tools to help them dress better. Um, yes, I, shopping is a part of what I do, but the biggest success and the biggest, uh, like the, the my favorite part of the work that I do is helping women see that they can look better and that they can dress better. And that all those comments that people made when they were younger about their appearance that made them self-conscious about whatever, I'm sure most of us, if not all of us can relate. <laughs> people tease you about something, you develop a complex about it, but <clears throat> we're grown now. We've had a, I'm sure most of us have had, you know, a set of experiences, all types of experiences that have shaped who we are. And, you know, within that journey, there are mistakes and successes and things like that. And it's like, okay, how can I use all of those things that have happened, the lessons that I've learned, the skills that I've acquired, the relationships I've built, how is that impacting the person I am today? And how can I use that to redefine what my life looks like and define what it's going to look like in the future? Because that's the thing. It's like, you know, you start looking around and you see, okay, shit is real, right? <laughs> Every time you turn around, something's going on. And it's like, if you don't take the time to intentionally carve out happiness, whatever that looks like for you, I don't know, you're missing out. So try to do that. 
um, I don't know how I got there, but let me get back. So women style, women uh, 40 plus, middle age. So yeah, let's talk about this. Middle age. What is middle age, right? Depending on your definition, it can be, I don't know, what, mid to late 30s to 60s? I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. What's middle age? Regardless of what it is, I'm over 50, okay? And today's 50-year-olds are not like the 50-year-olds of yesteryear, okay? Right? So we have different needs and challenges and desires and wishes. And we still, you know, at least some of us, we're young at heart, you know, like it's not over yet. Okay. And even though I may have a little bit of gray and even though, you know, things are different, they're shaped different. And, you know, I'm a different woman. I feel more confident. And I, I think that is one of the the, the greatest gifts <laughs> that the aging process has given me. And that's not to say that, you know, I don't have areas that, um, you know, I'm not completely confident in, but overall, I just feel more confident in the person that I am. I know that I have, you know, a certain set of skills and talents and, and gifts that I can give to the world. And I see how that I impact people in a positive way. And I say that, um, you know, coming from a place of appreciation and humility, because that's what I want to do. I want to help women. So here we are. So the fearless fashionista, maybe I'll tell you a little bit more of my story the next, um, on the next episode, but let me just give you a, an overview of how I got here today. <laughs> so I've been wanting to do this podcast. Um, you know, I, understand the value of podcasting and how it helps people get to know you. And it gives me an opportunity to go into depth about style related topics, but you know, you can't talk about style without talking about life. And that's what the secrets of stylish women is all about. It's about exploring, you know, our lives, the lives of women through the lens of style, but I also want an opportunity to share who these women are and, and, you know, what they're doing and how they impact other people's lives. So it's going to be beyond style, but um, of course, style has to be a part of the conversation. So, you know, I gave you one of my style secrets and that's to not put so much pressure on yourself to be perfect all the time. Like you're going to have those days where you're just going to be, you know what, this is what you're getting and that's it. And that's fine. Um, but the second secret there's going to be a secret at the beginning and a secret at the end. And the secret at the end does not have to be related to style. So it can be about love, life, relationships, sex, anything. So there are times when I will be doing my podcast solo and I will ha also have guests. So stay tuned. I have some interesting and cool and um, great, amazing women lined up to appear on this podcast. So it's going to be fun. Um, during the pandemic, I did an Instagram live um, series. It was a weekly series. And I think I might've done 10 or 11 episodes and it was called Fashion Forum. And it was a time when, you know, people were largely at home and people were looking for ways to connect. And I was like, let me do this, right? So I was um, a guest on someone else's forum initially, and I was like, I should do this myself related to style. And I did it. And I lined up um, guests for like 10, 11 weeks. I think there was only one week it, that wasn't consecutive, but I did it for like 11 weeks and um, 10, 11 weeks. And that was a win for me on so many fronts because I, it got me used to going live and talking to a camera and just being in front of the camera. And that's uncomfortable. It was uncomfortable for me and it still is, you know, I'm still, when I see myself on camera, um, I'm just like, Ugh. but I'm kind of used to it now. Um, but fashion forum gave me the opportunity to learn how to talk to guests and drive a conversation and get used to being in front of the camera and I stopped it after a while, but I'm back, bitches. <laughs> um, so anyway, I'm back. Okay. And here I am. So the secrets of stylish women. And 
I'm doing it dirty. You know, I have my mic and I have my, you know, streaming service. Thank you. Shout out to Stephanie Humphrey. I saw her recently at a podcast event and I was sharing with her my idea about um, doing a podcast and she challenged me to launch my podcast. So here I am. And I don't have a fancy, I don't have a studio. I don't have a fancy backdrop. Um, and I didn't want to give myself any more excuses to not do it. So Stephanie helped show me how I can do it. So thank you to Stephanie. We all need people to kind of push us and help us out. Um, but I'm here. And so there will be changes. There, there may be changes in the backdrop or location. I may not do it from the same place. I don't know. I'm just going to figure things out as I go along and not pressure myself to be perfect. So that actually kind of ties into what I said earlier. And it doesn't only have to apply to style. Like if you are the type of person to get paralyzed um, by, what do you call it? Um, analysis paralysis. Yes. That's me. And sometimes I need a little swift kick in the butt to get me going. So here I am, I'm going. And the secrets of stylish women. So I will be back. Oh, the second secret. I'll, I will be back. I'm not sure the frequency or the day that I'm going to drop or anything like that. So that was the point. Yeah. Like I haven't figured out all the details, but I'm here and that is a start. And I hope you take this journey with me. If there are topics that you want me to discuss or I don't know, interesting things that you'd like my perspective on, let me know. Um, I'm not huge on trends. I'm aware of certain things that are going on, but I'm really more about cultivating your own personal sense of style. That may include trends. I'm not going to say I never, you know, indulge in trends, but I like to buy clothes that I can wear for at least several years, a few years at the very least. And I don't want to be having to swap out my wardrobe every season. That just doesn't make sense to me. And especially if I like something, and I say this often, if I like something, I want to wear it. You know, like if I like someone, I want to date you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't need to switch up things all the time, which is, it's going to sound like it's hypocritical. Yes, I do like having variety in my wardrobe. Okay. But I do, I like to come back to my pieces. I like to rewear them. And we're at a point in society where it's like, you know, people get called out for rewearing something. Well, guess what? I'm re-wearing my stuff. <laughs> I said it slowly like that because I was gonna. I felt myself about to get tongue-tied. I was gonna say I'm re-wearing my stuff. I'm re-wearing my stuff. Yeah. Anyway, see, these are the dialogues that I have with myself. Now you're seeing them play it on screen. Um. So yes, I am a huge proponent of re-wearing your stuff. Why not? That's what you bought it for. And for me. The exciting part is being able to, you know, remix, rewear, restyle things so that they look different. Something like this, like this is a bodysuit. It's one of those stretchy bodysuits. This is like a great layering piece. Things like this are very foundational for me. Um, short sleeves because I'm men postmenopausal. I still, you know, get high flashes. And sometimes I just need to be able to, you know, start ripping my clothes off. <laughs> And um, I need some kind of layer. So I love pieces like this. These are like layering pieces that are great and you can get them in multiple colors. But um, I like to rewear my stuff. Like something like this is going to be, like I have um, several of these <laughs> and I rewear them because it's, like it's a like a basic layering piece for me. But I also like to wear things that are fun and interesting, but I like to rewear my stuff. I actually have a ball skirt on now. I'm going to a brunch. <laughs> and, um, I mean, that's a perfect place to wear a ball skirt, right? <laughs> and the theme is diamonds and denim. So diamonds and denim and yeah. So this is not, I have a, a denim jacket that I'm going to put on and the diamonds are the earrings and the shoes and the pocketbook. It's water. Ooh, talking takes a lot out of you. Oh my God. Am I even going to be able to go to this brunch and function? Because I'm expending all of this energy here. This is a lot. And even though I'm not dealing with people right now, I know that you're going to be <laughs> seeing me because I think this is actually the first podcast episode because I've been doing all this talking and I'm not doing this again. 
So this is what you get. And this is the first episode. And I know you're going to be viewing it. So just knowing that you're viewing it is draining me. <laughs> okay. Let me get back. And I'm going to close this soon. I don't even know how long this is. How long have we been going? Oh, only 20 minutes. So I was thinking, depending on the guest and depending on the topic, it can be between 30 minutes and an hour. But I don't want to limit what the podcast can be based on an arbitrary number. So I, I probably won't go longer than an hour. Or if I do, maybe break it up into segments. But that means it would be pre-recorded. But if I'm doing it live, I don't know. I'll figure out the logistics. But I don't want to confine things based on an arbitrary number. If the conversation is flowing or if the topic's flowing and there are things to discuss, I want to keep going. Also being mindful of the guests' time if I do have guests. Um, oh, a couple of other things I wanted to talk about. So I, I was talking about trends. And I'm rambly. And I'm probably going to be rambly in the future, so get, get used to it. But um, I spoke about trends briefly, only to say that I'm not a huge person into trends. I'm aware of things that are going on, and I do try to incorporate modern touches into the way I dress and the way my clients dress. But there are certain things that I'm always going to gravitate towards, certain things that you'll always see in my wardrobe. And that's how I encourage my clients to look at their wardrobes. Like, what are the things that you really love? Are there certain um, colors, patterns, textures, shapes? silhouettes that you like, identify what those things are. Start to be intentional about what you bring into your wardrobe. If they don't fall within those you know, categories, do you really want or need them? Um, basics. So you should have things in your wardrobe and that fall into two categories, things that you um, really love, like stop buying things that you don't really like. Um, and then things that you need. So when I say need, it's like you either need it for um, to help you bridge the gap between some of your dressier pieces or some of your layers. So this is something that I need, something I need for layering, something that I need. I wear things like this all the time. So this is like a one of my needs, but a need could also be, okay, you know that you're going to a lot of dressy events and you should have a pair, like a tuxedo suit or a nice pair of dress pants or a couple of pairs of dress pants. Like those are things that you need. Okay. So your wardrobe should, should be comprised of things that you really like. And then the things that you need and stop buying a bunch of bullshit that you're not going to wear. I do the same thing. I do the same thing. And now I'm going through an exercise of really looking at my clothes. Like I have a bunch of shoes that I'm not going to wear. <laughs> I bought actually several of them during lockdown. And I guess I needed to do that to get me through that dark time. Right. But I'm not wearing those shoes. They're uncomfortable. And just they're just not practical. And it's like the way I feel about style is you're going to go through evolutions. You're going to go through evolutions and don't be afraid to evolve out of something, you know, like that used to be something that defined a portion of your style or defined your style. Like you don't have to stick with that forever. Or if you want to stick with something, for example, let's say you like po polka dots. Maybe you used to do big, bold polka dots. Maybe as you evolve, the polka dots get smaller or they're a different color. You know, like there are ways to keep constants, like themes in your wardrobe without, um, you know, like making it fresh and I don't know, just still including it in some way. It can evolve. Your style can evolve. It's okay. Like you don't have to do the same thing all the time. And so I'm going through, I'm getting rid of clothes clothes, well, mostly shoes, because I'm not really wearing heels like that. I said that before. And, and then I wore a pair of heels. And then at the end of the night, I was like, I'm never wearing these shoes again. Um, and then today I was thinking about wearing them to the brunch. I'm like, I'm not only going to be on my feet for X, Y, Z. Like it's getting to that point. <laughs> I don't want to wear heels like that. I just don't, you know, but I'll do what I have to do when I need to do it. Um, <laughs> So yeah, so your style and your taste and your things will evolve and change, but embrace that. It's a good thing. But I do encourage you to use style as a tool, not just a tool to help you accomplish your goals and to bring the right people and things into your life, but it's fun. Style is fun. Isn't it fun when you play dress up? And you know, um, speaking of fun, last week I hosted Sip Shop Chic 
Um, it was a networking and style event at Sybaritic Boutique in Bear, Delaware, and we had fun. It was fun. We had nice vibes with the music and you know, the women who came by seemed to have a good time. People bought things, played dress up. And that was the reason I thought about that. Um, we were having fun playing dress up and talking about clothes and just having fun about clothing. Like you can have fun. It's okay to have fun with clothing. You know, it's okay. So I may be doing other sip shop chic events. Oh, I said it without getting tongue tied. Um, I may do other events, so stay tuned for that. But thank you for everyone who came out. Thank you to, um, yeah, I'm going to do proper acknowledgments um, elsewhere because I don't want to forget anyone. But thank you, everyone who came out. And thank you to the partners, um, Symbiotic Boutique, Omega Optical Designers, Car Service. And thank you to Nell Vision Photography and Videography Services. Thank you to everyone who helped out. See, this is why I didn't want to start because I'm going to forget someone. And if I forgot someone, it's only because I'm on the spot and I'm trying to remember and I'm not going to remember. So thank you everyone. And thank you to everyone who came out. Um, the last secret that I'll share with you is this, and this is not a style related secret. Um, I wrote this down. So when I was planning on the topics that I was going to discuss, I wrote some ideas down because I have to organize my thoughts in some kind of way. And I also have some sticky notes with some things on here. And I think I covered most of those things. I'll save some other things for um, another episode. Maybe I'll start sharing um, some specific examples of like how I help clients. I need to write that down so I'll remember. But anyway, um, the other thing that I wanted to say um, is this is not a secret per se. Maybe it's a, a tip or something that you may want to consider. So as you evolve, like people don't like confrontation. People don't like having uncomfortable conversations, myself included. I am no different than any of y'all. Um, but I have been working to exercise the muscle of being uncomfortable to evolve as a person. And there's a lot of discomfort that comes with evolving and changing, like evaluating your own behavior, dealing with your own issues, being vulnerable enough to even have that level of introspection. You know, not everyone will ever be comfortable being honest with themselves about themselves. And it's a journey. It's not easy. I haven't, I haven't conquered it. You know, I haven't figured it all out, but in order for you to grow as a person, you have to be uncomfortable. So that's my it's not a secret. It's more of a, I don't know, take it for whatever you want to take it as, but there's a level of discomfort, but there's also a level of clarity that comes with deciding that you're going to try to change your life. And it's a constant journey. I'm constantly going to be working on myself and I challenge you to work on yourself, including your personal style. So if you need a personal stylist, <laughs> go to thefearlessfashionista.com. And I'm serious. Oh, and did I mention I wrote a book? Yes, child. I wrote a book. It's right here. Uh-oh. I'm about to knock down this whole row of books. Okay. We're not going to do that right now. I'm going to show you my book the next time. But I wrote a book, and I think it's about time for part two. And actually, I wanted to do either a second edition. Like, I have ideas. I have ideas. But you know what? I'm only one person, so I'm executing slowly, but surely. So stay tuned for more from the Fearless Fashionista. Um, I will be back soon. And like I said, I'm doing this podcast like real basic boots on the ground, and we will evolve and get better. So I hope you stick around to see how things evolve and change, and I hope you become a part of the conversation. So thank you for tuning in, and I will be back soon. And I'll see you soon. And that's it. <laughs> All right. So let me end this recording. Ah.